your average because you haven't mastered detachment. Let me tell you about the story of the woman and two monks. Two monks were walking from one village to another. On their way, they arrived at a large puddle full of mud, which they had to cross. A young woman was standing at the brink of the puddle, not knowing what to do. Do you want to cross the puddle? One of the monks asked her. Yes, I do, the young woman answered, but I don't want to get my shoes and dress dirty. Come, said one of the monks, I will carry you to the other side. He took her on his back and carried her to the other side of the puddle. After crossing the puddle, the two monks continued walking silently for hours until they reached their destination. The other monk could not keep silent any longer and exclaimed, how could you carry that woman on your back? We are monks and are not allowed to touch women. The monk who carried the woman across the puddle on his back smiled and said, I have left the woman on the other side of the puddle, but it seems you are still carrying her on your back. Which monk do you relate to? The first, unbothered by other people's opinions and commentary, or the second, do you keep thinking about the words and events after they have happened? Do you go on and on playing the same scene over and over and over again in your head? See, when you're not disciplined in detachment, you will remain average. Why? Because you're choosing to do what you think is the easier option, which is blend in, hide from the stairs, hide from the attention, and just go about your life going on noticed. Standing out is just as hard as being average, but which hard will you choose? Standing out requires a level of discipline in detachment because you have to be so sure of yourself that no stare, no comment, no glance, no look, no whispering will make you feel like a lesser version of yourself. That is why 99% of people go along with life being average, blending in, doing what everybody else is doing, because they care so deeply about what other people think. They are attached to the good opinions of others, which means they are as equally attached to the bad opinions from others. Detachment really is just releasing codependency. Codependency on what other people think of you. If you go about your life and you're blending in, you're fitting in, you're never gonna cause a ruckus. You're never gonna cause people to stare or to look or to whisper, right? Whatever they might be saying in those whispers, you're not gonna cause that reaction in people because you look like them. You look like the next person on the train. You look like this person, that person. There is no need for commentary because you blend in, you fit in. But when you stand out, you're causing a reaction in somebody and you have to be so confident in yourself to be okay with that reaction, whether it's a good reaction or a bad Bad reaction and that is where being detached comes in so let's build this detached version of yourself in three steps the first step is solo dating the reason you allow yourself to take on other people's opinions is because you are okay with letting them tell you who you are because you don't know who you are so you need to solo date to find out who you are connect with yourself what do you like when you're sitting alone what are you thinking about are those thoughts helpful you have to figure out who you are so that when somebody tells you who you are, you can tell them, no, sorry, not me. And that is when you build that detachment because you're okay with yourself. You're standing firm with who you are. So we have to solo date to figure this out. When you are choosing to be average, it's because other people are telling you to be average. They're telling you that it's better to be average. It's easier to be average. And you're listening because you're like, okay, well, I don't really know who I am. My solo dates personally are always focused on connecting to myself on a deeper level because that's what solo dating is all about. So whether that's me doing my creative hobby, which is paint by numbers or going back to the basics and just doing some really great therapeutic self-care rituals. That is how I solo date at home. I actually found this really great class on Skillshare, which combines both my creative hobby and the reconnecting to myself on a deeper level, which I love. This class in particular is called Reconnect With Yourself With Guided Journaling, which has this drawing your feelings portion that I find so therapeutic during solo time. Skillshare is an amazing online learning community where you can develop your skills and new hobbies, which you can help to build your relationship with yourself and reconnect with yourself. The best thing is that Skillshare's learning paths are ordered through sequence. So all you have to do is literally pick the hobby you wanna do, hit play and your solo date begins. And another great thing about Skillshare's learning paths is that there's something for everyone. So whether that be design, music, photography, cooking, whatever vibe you're trying to create for your solo date, Skillshare has you covered. 
there's actually another class that I've already got ready to go for my next solo date, which is called Self-Care Essentials, Embrace and Nurture the Real You. So prepare for your next solo date at home with Skillshare. To get started today, use my link in the description box. The first 500 people to use my link in the description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Step number two to building your above average detached version of yourself is to stop accommodating other people's opinions. This is how you become so magnetic. Every single person that is average is living for somebody else's opinion. So they're living their life because they're accommodating, they're taking on somebody's opinion of what they think that they should be doing in their life. So when you're accommodating for somebody else, you're shifting things around in your life to make sure they are comfortable. There are literally so many people in this world, 8 billion to be exact, and if we accommodated 8 billion opinions for our life, where would we be? We wouldn't leave the house. We wouldn't interact with anybody. We wouldn't do anything because we'd be so confused on who we are going to be, what we need to be doing. This person needs to be happy, so how can I make them happy? How can I shift around things in my life to accommodate their feelings, to accommodate their opinions for my life? It just simply does not work. And when you understand that you cannot make anybody happy, you cannot please everybody, you only need to focus on pleasing yourself. That is when you truly start living. That is when you walk out in that fur coat on the train when everybody else is dressed so plain, so boring, so average and casual, and you're wearing a fur coat and they're looking at you and you don't care because you know you look good, because you know who you are, because you know that you would rather be in that fur coat with all these eyeballs on you than to just blend in and literally just be non-existent like who wants to live like that and trust me i have been there because when i was in university when people looked at me it was like oh my god why are they looking at me i don't want anyone looking at me and so i did everything to blend in but then when you realize that everybody is going to say something you just decide that you don't want to blend in because blending in is boring and when people get mad at you or annoyed at you for not accommodating their opinions anymore it's because a version of them their self-image feels hurt their version of self is now confused. So your accommodation of their opinion was helping them in some way, helping them feed their self image, helping them feel their own identity. And when that goes away, now they're left with having to deal with this all on their own. So you have to understand that people giving their opinion on your life has to do with them. You're entangled in this web of like, your accommodation of people's opinions is helping them. It's self-serving, right? So they're not giving their opinion because they really care about your life. It's because giving their opinion on your life helps them in some way, it feeds them. And so you have to pull yourself out of this web and not have yourself tied to anybody else, not attached to anybody else's opinions and anybody else's version of themselves and their self-image. Like you're not responsible for any of that. So you need to let go of that responsibility. But again, being detached from other people's opinions comes from building a safe space for yourself within yourself. And you can only do that when you really get to know who you are. Let's go back to the story of the two monks and the woman. The first monk offered his help, he did a good deed. The second monk was so fixated on the fact that we're monks, we're not supposed to touch women, that he has got himself all in distress over the action of the first monk. This wasn't even what he did. It's not even his own action. And he's distressed over the first monk's action. When the first monk did the deed and forgot about it and left it be, but the second monk was so concerned with the action of another human being, the other monk, that he's causing himself turbulence and distress within himself over an action he didn't even do. So you see when you focus too much on what other people are doing, when you let other people focus too much on what you are doing, you live a very mediocre, average, boring life because all you are doing in your life is trying to please and accommodate the opinions of others. When that gets you nowhere, it just gets you into the space of no identity. You don't know who you are. So the longer you let other people tell you who you are, the longer you stay being average because average people go with the crowd. They do what other people are accepting of. And they do this because they find it easier to accommodate and to blend in. Standing out, going against the grain causes a lot of reaction in people that a lot of people cannot handle. When you don't care what other people have to say, they start speaking less. When their opinions start to matter less to you, 
they start giving them less. They are just waiting for you to have some self-respect and say, hold on, I'm not taking that on board. I don't resonate with that. I don't like that. I don't believe in that. I don't want my life like that. That is what they are waiting for. And until you don't do that with the people in your life, with strangers, with people staring at you on the bus because you're wearing a fur coat to work, they are going to continue to do it because you're allowing them to do it. You're opening the space for that judgment. You're saying, hey, just tell me who I am. I'm waiting because I don't really know myself. That is why you have to so strongly gatekeep your life so that other people don't even have an opportunity or an entrance into your life to offer their opinion on it. Because when you're wide open and saying, hey, I'm here, let's hear it, they're gonna do it. Earlier I mentioned that detachment is a spiritual discipline that helps you escape mediocrity, but I can understand that it's a very difficult thing to apply if you're starting from zero. So watch this video next where I show you two very critical mindsets that will catapult you into your detachment journey so that you can stop caring what people think and escape the average rat race.